Well, if you haven't heard enough of it, you're going to hear a little bit more. Of course, it is Brexit Day. And of course, this is the day where the UK um, are going to cast their ballot on what has been described as the most important political decision that has been made in generations. Now, with repercussions that are almost impossible to quantify if the UK chooses to actually exit the European Union. Well, in Live on Live today, uh, I'm joined in the studio by Colin Hay, who's a political sci scientist specialising in British politics at the Sciences Po here in Paris. Colin, great to have you back on the programme. It's lovely to be here. Look, we've had our correspondence in Edinburgh, we've had our correspondence in London, we've had Nancy Fleming's um, report there on Brexit. But let's just look into the past here. What has brought the UK to this point when it comes to the European Union? It's a very good question and one needs to remember what it is that's brought the UK to this, this point. In a sense, there has been a long-standing consensus in British politics that you couldn't afford to ask this question to the public. There was a referendum in 1975 on pretty much the same question. On the EEC, of course, uh, back On the EEC then, yeah. uh, back then, the European Economic Community as it then was. There was a two-thirds majority in favour of staying and since then this has been a no-go area in some sense. But the problem is that the Conservative Party for a long time has been split on this question and David Cameron thought that it was in his interest as, as leader of the Conservative Party to put this question to the British public in the hope that he would kick it into the long grass for 20 or 30 years. Now, that's probably going to backfire rather horribly. Well, indeed. I mean, looking at, you know, whatever the outcome, uh, David Cameron's position as Prime Minister is surely in question because, I mean, mm. this gamble could essentially lead to the disintegration of the United Kingdom. And whatever the result is tomorrow... Um, it's still shaken the unity of the United Kingdom to its foundations because it's a massive split. It's, it's, I mean, it's at a hair's breadth on which side it may go. I think that's absolutely right. I mean, it's impossible at this moment to tell whether, whether it's Brexit or not. But what's fairly clear is that England and probably Wales will vote for out, uh, while Scotland and Northern Ireland will vote to stay. Now, it doesn't, we, we don't know what, how that will add up in a sense. Uh, it's probably something like 52, 48 or 42... Um, or, 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 for, or, or for 48, 52, the other way around. But it's within, that, that's, that, that, that's what we don't know. But what we do know is that uh, Britain is already massively divided over this issue, and that will have long-term political repercussions. Those political re repercussions will be more intense if the aggregation of all of these votes is for Brexit, clearly. But even in the absence of that, this is this is new territory for Britain, I think. Well, now, I mean, we are saying new territory for Britain, and I mean, this uh, the the there was a very vitriolic campaign that was uh, that was fought. Uh, I mean, specifically on the lead side, but I mean, we're trying to be balanced here. But it was still uh, it was uh, it, the, the, there was passionate. Um, debates even the other day with the, the new London mayor and I mean we have Boris Johnson um, who, and Nigel Farage who are you know the, the media stars of the Leave campaign. Now we've seen all of this in the UK context but look you know surely now Britain has basically irreparably damaged its relationship with the European Union whatever the outcome. I mean how I mean even if yep. this brinksmanship that has been pushed forward as an um, election mandate by David Cameron has brought the European and the UK yep. to such a precipice that how can relations ever be <laughs> how can they ever be normalized with Brussels yep. after this? I, I think yeah. It's, it's very difficult. But what one has to do, I think, is run this, run the two scenarios through because they're very different scenarios. The scenario, which is the Brexit scenario, is one in which, of course, Britain's relationship with the European Union is completely reconfigured. Mm -hmm. The problem, to some extent, is that I think those who vote for Brexit think they know what Brexit is. And in fact, Brexit could be a whole variety of rather different things, depending on how that negotiation goes and also who's presiding over it. So if if it's Cameron, who's still the prime minister presiding over a, a Brexit negotiation, then the terms of Brexit may not be staggeringly different from the terms Britain currently has. But I think that's very unlikely. It's much more likely that Cameron would be deposed by a Brexiteer and, and that Brexit would be implemented by a Brexiteer, someone like Boris Johnston, for instance. But if, on the other hand, Britain stays in, 
then we get this kind of very interesting politics of, of, of overtures and trying to bring Britain back into the frame, trying to make sure that the rest of Europe doesn't go off having their own uh, Frexit and Grexit mm. and whatever uh, <laughs> referenda. So there will be an attempt, I think, to try to provide a kind of a, a, an opportunity for Britain to re-engage with Europe. Now, again, whether or not that invitation is taken up depends on a lot on who the British Prime Minister is at that point. Well, I mean, you can have the, the likes of um, uh, Donald Tusk or Jean-Claude Juncker at this stage. They, they really feel that the UK has ruined their party. I mean, they really feel that they have been like the bad guest at a dinner party where they're like, that there's been analogies where it's like the, the UK getting sick in the corner and then coming back to the table and say, OK, now I want it to be done this way. Yeah. But I, I, th I, I think that's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And it, and for me, it means that if we get into a Brexit scenario, so if it's 51% for Brexit and that's the decision and it's ratified by the British, uh, by, by, it's ratified by the Westminster Parliament and it happens, uh, then I think a certain amount of revenge will be exacted on Britain for that choice. French, policy, uh, French politicians have have hinted fairly strongly at that. Well, and they're a bolshy lot at the yeah, best well, of times. Yeah. Well, and there's a presidential election coming mm. up too. The politics of of exacting some revenge for this decision, which will influence France economically too, uh, is, is in one sense uh, understandable, I think. Um, if, however, Britain teeters but stays, then it's a bit more difficult because I think I mean, they're not going to be eating humble pie, but they do have to find some way of making this work which doesn't produce the same malign effects that they would assume that Brexit would. But will Cameron still have... I mean, Cameron also came to Brussels saying... and also. Um, petitioned various European leaders about renegotiating, get, getting a better yeah. deal for the UK, which basically didn't really amount to anything. But will Cameron still have the same leverage, even if it does, if the Remain campaign does um, win the day? I, I think it's very difficult for Cameron to, uh, assuming that he's still Prime Minister, Indeed. which I think may well be unlikely, mm. but I, let's assume for a moment that Cameron is the Prime Minister and Brexit hasn't happened. I think it's very different, for, very difficult for Cameron to go back to Hollande, to go back to Merkel and say, right, OK, that, that agreement that Sorry we negotiated that. not very long ago, <laughs> it, it was OK, it was, it was OK, it got, us, it got us what we wanted in the end, in that we're staying, uh, but it's it's not quite enough. We want a little bit more. I think I think that that kind of brinkmanship can't that that, that politics can't be played twice. Yes. I think. Now another thing that is really kind of coming up in the media and definitely in the uh, British papers just over the last few days is the very unlikely scenario, but very interesting little tenet in uh, the law is that this poll isn't legally binding. Yes. The Commons could actually overturn any plebiscite because it's not a legally binding thing. Now, has this ever happened in the past? No, it hasn't. When in fact, Britain's only ever had three uh, UK-wide referenda, mm -hmm. if, if the plural of referendums yeah. is referenda. But, um, so it had <coughs> one on the AV vote in 2011, which was catastrophically lost. Um, uh, it, uh, uh, and, and it's had two referenda, and essentially, on this question, the 1975 one and this. Um, a situation in which this referendum, even once all the votes have counted, remains on a knife edge does create the possibility that uh, that the decision not be ratified in Parliament. It's a very difficult thing um, to do, in a sense, having put the question to the public and counted up the number of votes, you say, well, actually, sorry, you got the wrong answer. Well, That's I mean, a, it would feed really um, into the, 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 the hard right wing kind of uh, the, 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 the loony right of the, uh, the, of yeah. the Leave campaign who would basically take to the streets and use like, and I don't know what would happen. I, I, think, I think that's exactly right. But I mean, the, there are plenty of scenarios in which something like that could happen anyway, because actually it strikes me one of the big problems is if, if there is a, a, if Brexit happens, then the next question is how Brexit is implemented. And it strikes me as very unlikely that Brexit will be implemented in the manner that people voting for Brexit assume. When they, when they think of Brexit, they think of some complete separation uh, of the British polity and economy from, from European rules and regulations. And that's not the case. If you want to sell goods in Europe, then they've got to subscribe to European standards. And, and yet much of the debate seems to be about the nature 
of those European standards mm-hmm. and regulations. So, so I think I think that <coughs> that issue that what does Brexit mean doesn't go away uh, if if Britain votes for Brexit uh, today. Uh, well, in all fairness, look, I mean, the, the British paper, The Guardian, has really just uh, over the past few weeks has just been coming out with article after article after article about the questions to ask yourself as a voter um, when going into Brexit to really try and underline all of the deals that are you know they're multilateral deals that I'm you know um, that, that that basically people don't recognise that you know but the sovereignty is already bound up this whole idea of good old Blighty yeah. and merry old England mm. is is defunct well absolutely I, I, and as has been pointed out multiple times in this campaign although I'm not entirely sure it's been accepted by all citizens but but it's been pointed out many times much of Britain's law is around safety, around health, around consumer protection, is said in Brussels. Britain would have to reinvent that. Um, and and that's a very difficult thing, a very, very time-consuming thing to do. Indeed. There are reams of legislation that we need well, to be Well, I mean, it's exactly, you're, it's, you're literally pulling across a part of ball of wool here. Yeah. Now, Colin, we're coming, unfortunately, very much to the end of our programme here, but there was one very interesting article that came out during the week um, about uh, from an Irish Times journalist called Fintan O'Toole saying that Brexit has been fuelled by English nationalism. Could this end in an unexpected self-rule that was not planned? <laughs> Well, for England? To, to some extent, yes, because Brexit would possi- or quite possibly lead to a second Scottish independence referendum. Uh, in a situation in which Northern Ireland, too, has voted for Brexit, we see the fragmentation of Great Britain, I think. Indeed. And that's, that's what's being hinted at there. Yeah. Colin Hay, political scientist with Sciences Po here in Paris. Thank you very much for being on the programme today. Thank you.